Good morning, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on autonomic innovation of the heart. The heart has extrinsic and intrinsic innovation. The extrinsic innovation of the heart is primarily from the autonomic nervous system. The medulla oblongata is located in the brain stem and is a major site in the brain for regulating autonomic nerve outflow to the heart and blood vessels. It contains cell bodies for the sympathetic and parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. The activity of the medullary neurons is modulated by input from peripheral sensors and from other brain regions. The hypothalamus and higher centers modify the activity of medullary centers. Higher centers are important in stimulating cardiovascular responses to emotion and stress such as exercise and thermal stress. The sympathetic nerves exit the medulla and travel down the spinal cord. They synapse with relatively short preganglionic fibers. Short preganglionic fibers travel to and synapse within sympathetic ganglia. Postganglionic efferent fibers from the ganglia travel to the heart and vasculature where they synapse at their target organs. The parasympathetic nerves or vagal nerves exit the medulla as long preganglionic efferent fibers. Preganglionic efferent fibers form synapses with short postganglionic fibers within the heart or vascular tissue. Cardiac plexus. The cardiac plexus is an aggregation of autonomic nerves and ganglia, which receives both sympathetic and parasympathetic branches. Efferent and efferent fibers originate from the cardiac plexuses. From the plexuses emerges three large cardiac nerves, the right coronary cardiac nerve, the left coronary cardiac nerve, and the left lateral cardiac nerve. The superficial and deep cardiac plexuses provides postganglionic fibers to the SA node, AV node, and other parts of the cardiac conduction system. The superficial cardiac plexus is located below the arch of the aorta and anterior to the right pulmonary artery. The deep cardiac plexus is located anterior to the bifurcation of the trachea behind the arch of the aorta. Sympathetic supply to the heart. The sympathetic fibers innervating the heart originate mainly from the thoracic spinal segments T1 to T5. These fibers are distributed through the middle cervical ganglia, stellate ganglia or the cervical thoracic ganglia, and the first four ganglia of the thoracic sympathetic chain. The right dorsal medial and dorsal lateral cardiac nerves arises from these sympathetic trunks. They frequently unite to form one large nerve that follows the course of the left main coronary artery. It further separates into branches along the anterior descending and circumflex coronary arteries. These fibers innervate the sinoatrial node, AV node, and atrial and ventricular cardiac muscle. Sympathetic efferents from the right stellate ganglion distributes primarily to the anterior epicardial surface and the interventricular septum. Stimulation of the right stellate ganglion reduces systolic duration and increases heart rate. Sympathetic efferents from the left stellate ganglion distributes to the posterior and lateral surfaces of both ventricles. Stimulation of the left stellate ganglion increases mean arterial pressure and increases left ventricular contractility without significantly changing the heart rate. Ventricular sympathetic innervation is more dense than that of the atrium. The dominant effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the heart is maintaining or increasing myocardial contractility. Although normal sympathetic nervous system tone maintains myocardial contractility 20% above that in the absence of any SNS stimulation, denervated hearts, such as transplanted hearts, are still able to maintain adequate cardiac output via intrinsic mechanisms. Myocardial beta receptors Beta 1 These are G-alpha-S coupled receptors. The effector protein activates adenylyl cyclase. The second messenger is an increase in CAMP and this activates protein kinase A. Examples of G-alpha-S coupled receptors include alpha-1, B1, 
beta-1, 2, 3 adrenal receptors, adenosine A2 receptors, dopamine D1 and D5, histamine H2, serotonin 5-HT, 4, 6 and 7, and glucagon receptors. Mechanism of action of the G-protein coupled receptor Firstly, the GDP molecule is bound to the alpha subunit. Alpha subunit is bound to the beta gamma subunit. Number two, binding of the ligand to the GPCR activates it. Number three, GDP is displaced by GTP. Number four, GTP activates the G protein. Number five, the alpha GTP subunit with or without the beta gamma unit diffuses away from the GPCR to interact with effector proteins. The effector protein target is different for each type of G protein. Number 6. Alpha subunit hydrolyzes the GTP to GDP once the interaction with the effector protein has occurred and a phosphate molecule is released. G protein complex then binds to the GPCR again and the cycle repeats. Beta-1 receptors are involved in the regulation of inotropism and chronotropism. Distribution of postsynaptic beta-1 receptors occurs in the myocardium, SA node, and ventricular conduction system. Beta-2 receptors are G-alpha-S coupled receptors and comprises of 20-30% to of the beta receptors in the ventricular myocardium and up to 40% of the beta receptors in the atria. Distribution of presynaptic beta-2 receptors occur in the myocardium, SA node, and ventricular conduction system. Beta-2 adrenal receptors have similar distribution to postsynaptic beta-1 receptors. However, beta-2 receptors are located presynaptically. Activation of presynaptic beta-2 receptors increases the release of noradrenaline into the synaptic cleft. Beta-2 receptors are involved in the regulation of inotropism and chronotropism. Noradrenaline mediates increase in myocardial inotropism entirely via myocardial postsynaptic beta-1 agonism. Adrenaline mediates increase in myocardial inotropism via myocardial beta-1 and beta-2 agonism. Myocardial beta-2 agonism also mediates chronotropic responses to adrenaline. Downregulation of myocardial beta-1 receptors Receptor number and sensitivity is dynamically regulated by a variety of conditions. An increase or decrease in the number or density of receptors is referred to either upregulation or downregulation respectively. When the number of adrenal receptors change, there will be an alteration in the response to catecholamines. Generally, chronic exposure of adrenal receptors to their agonists markedly reduces but does not ablate the biologic response to catecholamines. Downregulation of myocardial beta-1 receptors occur in chronic heart failure where there is a persistent increase in plasma catecholamines. Thus, beta-1 agonists and exercise in patients with chronic heart failure produces a diminished inotropic and chronotropic response. However, beta-2 receptors are not downregulated in chronic heart failure and calcium-induced inotropism is not impaired. Tachyphylaxis to infused catecholamines also downregulates beta-1 receptors in the myocardium. Tachyphylaxis to beta agonists such as terbutaline, isoproteranol, and adrenaline in the treatment of asthma, and in hypertensive patients who also have elevated plasma catecholamines such as pheochromocytoma, have been shown to have downregulation of beta-1 myocardial receptors. Reversal of downregulation of beta-1 receptors is achieved by termination of the beta-1 agonist. Upregulation of beta receptors occur in non-selective beta blockade such as by propanolol. This accounts for the propanolol withdrawal syndrome which occurs when there is an acute discontinuation of propanolol. In this syndrome, alpha receptors are left unopposed. In addition to an increased number of beta receptors, this results in complications such as ventricular arrhythmias, severe angina, myocardial infarction, and even death. Postsynaptic myocardial alpha-1 receptors 
These are G-alpha-S couple receptors. Roles. Myocardial alpha-1 receptors exert a major facilitatory positive inotropic effect on the myocardium, mediating 30-50% to 50% of basal inotropic tone of a normal heart. They contribute to malignant reperfusion arrhythmogenesis. Activated alpha-1 myocardial receptors causes intracellular mobilization of cytosolic calcium ions, which may contribute to arrhythmogenesis. Myocardial alpha-1 receptors also serve as a reserve to the normally predominant beta-1 receptors in a failing heart. Downregulation of myocardial beta-1 receptors occur in a failing heart due to high levels of circulating catecholamines. However, downregulation of myocardial alpha-1 and beta-2 receptors does not occur in heart failure, and thus these receptors contribute more to positive inotropism. Applied Pharmacology Phenylephrine, an alpha-1 agonist, causes increase of myocardial contractility 2 to 3 times compared with 6 to 7 times increase produced by isoproteranol, which is a pure beta agonist. Coronary vasculature, sympathetic stimulation dilates coronary arteries via actions on beta adrenoceptors. Kindly refer to the video on myocardial blood flow for further details. Control of heart rate. Control of heart rate is through the balance between parasympathetic and sympathetic activity on the heart. Output from the rostral ventrolateral medulla increases sympathetic output, and this increases SA node and AV node action potential firing rate via right sympathetics and left sympathetics respectively, increased gradient phase 4 of the pacemaker action potential results in increased heart rate. Sympathetic activation occurs during situations such as exercise, emotional stress, dehydration or hemorrhage. Via beta adrenal receptors, this results in increased heart rate, increased contractility, increased rate of relaxation of the heart, and increased conduction velocity. Via alpha adrenal receptors, this results in vasoconstriction of arteries and veins mediated by alpha adrenal receptors. Parasympathetic supply to the heart. Parasympathetic preganglionic neurons arise in the medulla oblongata, in the dorsal vagal nucleus, nucleus ambiguous, and the solitary nucleus. These fibers enter the thorax as branches from the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the thoracic vagus nerve. The branches of the vagus nerve enter the cardiac plexus. Parasympathetic nerves are abundant near the coronary sinus and the superior vena cava. Parasympathetic ganglia within the heart are usually close to the structures innervated by the short postganglionic neurons. Nicotinic cholinergic receptors are stimulated during preganglionic transmission by acetylcholine released at the preganglionic junction, and acetylcholine released at the neuroeffector junction activates muscarinic receptors in the heart. The right vagus nerve innervates the sinoatrial node, and the left vagus nerve innervates the atrioventricular node. Some overlap occurs between the areas innervated by the left and right vagus nerves. Vagal efferent supplies the atrial muscle abundantly, ventricular myocardium sparsely, and coronary arterial vasculature. Vagal stimulation causes coronary vessel constriction via muscarinic receptor activation. Control of heart rate Control of heart rate is through the balance between parasympathetic and sympathetic activity on the heart. The resting heart rate of 60 to 80 beats per minute in adults results from a dominant vagal tone. The main effect of vagal cardiac stimulation is chronotropic, not inotropic. Parasympathetic control on the heart rate acts via both SA and AV node. Vagal stimulation results in reduced rate of sinoatrial node discharge, reduced excitability of AV junctional fibers, slowing of impulse conduction to the ventricles, and complete arrest of SA node firing and impulse conduction to the ventricles can occur in the presence of a very strong vagal discharge. In neonates and children, the sympathetic nervous system is less well developed compared to the parasympathetic nervous system. Thus, many insults such as hypoxia may therefore cause profound bradycardia. Influence of the parasympathetic nervous system on myocardial contractility The heart rate can double with cholinergic blockade without altering the contractility of the left ventricle. 
contractile force decreases by 10 to 20% with vagal stimulation of the heart. Parasympathetic activation causes negative chronotropy and dromotropy in the heart, negative inotropy and lucytropy in the atria. The negative inotropic and lucytropic effects of vagal stimulation are relatively weak in the ventricles. Cerebral vessel motor center. Parasympathetic division. Afferent nerves from the heart ascend via the vagus nerve and spinal cord to the parasympathetic motor efferent system of the medullary vasomotor center. The parasympathetic motor efferent system of the medullary vasomotor center consists of the nucleus tractus solitarius, dorsal vagal nucleus, and nucleus ambiguous. Sympathetic division. Sympathetic activation of the heart and vasculature originates in the rostral ventrolateral medulla, ventromedial rostral medulla, and the parvocellular region of the paraventricular nucleus. The RVL neurons receive multiple inputs from other medullary nuclei, baroreceptor pathway, GABAergic input, opioid effects, etc. to modulate sympathetic output, and contains neurons that provide regular output to sympathetic preganglionic neurons like a pacemaker. The nucleus tractor solitarius is located in the medulla, it receives sensory input from different systemic and central receptors such as baroreceptors and chemoreceptors. The NPS modulates the activity of sympathetic neurons located in the rostral ventrolateral medulla and the parasympathetic neurons located in the dorsal vagal nucleus and nucleus ambiguous from which arise the parasympathetic vagus nerves. Neuronal activity in the NTS activates vagal neurons and inhibits sympathetic neurons. The vasomotor center thus independently regulates arterial blood pressure, blood flow distribution, and cardiac contractility. Higher centers such as the cerebral cortex, hypothalamus, and pons also influence cardiovascular responses via the vasomotor center. The CNS exerts considerable control over the heart and circulation via the rostral ventrolateral medulla, nucleus tractus solitarius, intermediate and caudal ventrolateral medulla. Cardiac pain. Pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual or potential tissue damage or described in terms of such damage according to the International Association for the Study of Pain 2007. Nociceptive pain is pain produced in response to a noxious stimulus and can be divided into somatic and visceral nociceptive pain. Somatic nociceptive pain is effectively restricted to refer to pain arising from musculoskeletal structures, the limbs, the spine, the chest wall, and the abdominal wall. Distribution is well localized with dermatomal radiation. Character is variable, ranging from aching to sharp. Duration may be constant with incident breakthroughs, such as death provoked by movement. Autonomic features are few if present. Visceral nociceptive pain is pain that is caused by nociceptive information arising from organs or viscera of the body such as the heart, stomach, intestines, bladder, and uterus. It has a vague distribution with diffuse radiation and poorly localized, unlike somatic pain, as there are many fewer visceral sensory fibers than somatic sensory fibers in the dorsal roots. Character is usually dull and cramping. Duration is usually periodic. Autonomic features are often associated with visceral nociceptive pain, such as sweating and palpitations. Referred pain Referred pain is defined as pain perceived at a location other than the site of the painful stimulus or origin. Physiology of referred pain Nociceptive afferent fibers from dermatomes which transmit somatic pain and internal organs which transmit visceral pain terminates on the same relay neurons in the posterior horn of the spinal cord. Referred pain occurs when this convergence of somatic and visceral afferent fibers confuses the relationship between the perceived and actual sites of pain. Pain is often perceived at the somatic site as somatic pain is well localized, while visceral pain is not. Pain impulses from a particular internal organ are consistently projected to the same dermatome. Thus, the pattern of pain projection is helpful in determining which organ is affected. Due to the diffuse nature of visceral pain, 
Referred pain can extend to adjacent dermatomes. Origin of cardiac pain Normal coronary arterial blood flow rate at rest is 200 to 250 ml per minute or 5% of cardiac output. During vigorous exercise in a normal heart, coronary blood flow can increase by up to 5 times or 1,250 ml per minute in response to increased oxygen demand by the myocardium. Kindly refer to the video on physiology of coronary perfusion for further details. As myocardial oxygen demand exceeds oxygen supply, lactate and other metabolites begin to accumulate due to anaerobic metabolism. Exercise is then limited by fatigue and dyspnea, but not by cardiac pain in normal patients. In a patient with coronary artery disease, cardiac pain commonly precedes fatigue. Substances such as lactate, potassium, adenosine, prostaglandins, and bradykinins are released from the ischemic areas of the myocardium. These substances may sensitize sympathetic efferents, in particular neurons which have acid-sensing sodium channels. Lactate increases the activity of these channels and enhances their excitability. This sensitization process does not occur acutely as systemic lactic acidosis is not associated with chest pain. Character of cardiac pain the only sensation that can be elicited from the heart is pain. Cardiac pain is vaguely localized. Sympathetic efferents accounts for only about 2% of the total number of efferents to the upper thoracic cord. Stimulation of these sympathetic efferents causes excitation of spinothalamic tract cells at T1 to T5. Spinothalamic tract cells at T1 to T5 also receives somatic input from overlying structures. Due to the convergence of efferent input onto a common pool of spinothalamic tract cells, anginal pain is frequently referred to the arm and chest. This convergence occurs on tracts with efferents from deep muscle rather than cutaneous structures. Other visceral efferents also converge on this pool of spinothalamic tracts, resulting in similar symptoms with cardiac pain. Examples of these viscera include the gallbladder and esophagus. Vagal efferents. Nociceptive information is transmitted via vagal efferents to the spinothalamic tract at the level of C1 and C2. This causes cardiac pain to be referred to the neck and jaw. Due to these vagal efferents, not all cases of refractory angina can be treated successfully by sympathetic block. Other features of cardiac pain. Ascending spinal tracts transmit cardiac efferent signals to higher centers causing emotional manifestations of cardiac pain. For example, angor animi is a profound sense of impending death said to be unique to myocardial pain. Its neural processing is not fully understood. These are my references. Thank you.